Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's really good to see you all here today. I thought nobody really show up today because we have a bunch of snow on the street and it seems like we are going to have another snow. But thank you so much for coming today and worship together and celebrate this wonderful day we have in Jesus. So I want to say Happy Easter. Actually, by this time, I thought, okay, especially beginning of the week, I thought, oh, we might see some green grass on the ground this Sunday, especially Tuesday, there was nothing on the ground. So I thought, okay, yeah, things are going well, but it seems like it was my hope. Nothing we can see, right? All white. But I believe as our Lord risen again, our spring will come, so we can have this happy spring ever. Whoa, I can see Peter there. Yeah, Peter is here. Good. Yes, today I just want to encourage you again, just join us as a, our photo team, because we don't have Cheryl in our church as our administrative assistant, right? So I brought my selfie stick today, because today is the day we can Celebrate together, so. Okay, let's take a picture together. Okay, smile. All you need to do is take a picture and send it to us, and we will take care of it. So this is all I want to ask you as our photo team. You can contribute to Remember what we have done and what God has done in the midst of our lives as your uh, one simple thing. All you need is finger, right? <laughs> children's time is back. Today we are going to start our children's time. Yay! Yay! So when I say come before this, uh, come to this front view, please come front. So we are going to have some time together. Hopefully, you enjoy it. At the same time, this is one of the way, one of the best way I believe start the day. Wednesday morning, eight o'clock, we are going to have a morning prayer service uh, lead, led by Ted uh, Sposky. Yes, I have learned how to pronounce his last name. Yes, <laughs> so I can uh, say that. And April twentieth, please join us on, on Zoom so we can start our day with uh, short prayer and meditation, and song, and scripture, together. Okay, wow, I didn't know actually this week, Dave Meyer is going to start his Bible study on the book of uh, Daniel. We are going to have a Bible study on Thursday, 2 p.m. at the Christ Vice Room, so please join us. And if you haven't really asked him for uh, your booklet, oh, Please contact Dave. Um, mm, okay. Yes, it works. Because I just bought this. It must work. <laughs> and next Sunday, next Sunday, we are going to have another uh, worship service on, uh, in person on YouTube and Zoom. So if you wish to stay home, please stay home and contact, uh, connect uh, on Zoom or YouTube live streaming so we can all worship together 10 o'clock, April 24th. So you don't need to pre-register anymore, but please wear the mask when you come into the building and using sanitizer and let us worship together. Yes, I just want to introduce our uh, new bi-weekly children's program. It seems like a lot of people are comfortable with gathering together and having something together as a community. And we haven't really done any program for ever, it seems like, right? Since pandemic started, we paused everything and we stopped all the programs, weekly programs. Now we start our new bi-weekly children's program, which I call Craft Dinner with Not K, but craft and dinner. <laughs> it's starting from uh, April 26th, 4.30. So basically after school, just bring your kids. We are going to have supper together. We are going to have a time for craft. So you can enjoy and you can uh, eat. You can go home and take a rest of the day, rest uh, the rest of the day. 
So basically, come, join us. No matter how old you are, probably if you are in junior high or high school, you don't want to come. But if you wish to come, we welcome you, everyone. Every age group, Kevin, yes, you can come. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> if you want to have a uh, free uh, supper. So, yay, Emma! And I just want to introduce the facilitator uh, of this program. So, somebody who needs to lead and show the leadership of this program, right? And thankfully, one of our family members, Jordan, and his family, his crews, will help us to navigate and organize all the crafting. Isn't it amazing? And he is very excited about this. At the same time, his crews, Jada, Jake, Jackson, and Jared, also so excited to spend time together with all of you. So please invite your friend. Emma, you can invite your friend. And Xavier, Z you can invite your friend. Come together, like Skylar. You can bring Skylar together so we can spend some time together. Right? <laughs> Reese, you should come too. Yes, at the same time, I just want to encourage you to involve in this ministry, craft and dinner team. We need somebody to set up the tables and set up the, uh, organize the supper and clean up after the, uh, each program. So please consider to join this craft and dinner team. Another good news. We are going to start our youth group again, April 30th. Yes, April 30th, uh, 12 o'clock, because we, we, we usually have our youth group Friday afternoon, Friday evening, but this time, for the first time, we just want to start something different than previous years, and then we're going to go back to Friday bi-weekly. But on April 30th, we are going to have a pizza together and having a meal together and, and have some ice break time. At the same time, another good news is we are going to go to watch this game. The Manitoba Moose. Actually, we received this email from the, uh, one of the organizers about uh, this faith and family game not, uh, day. Uh, if we pay $15, which is about half more, less, less than half price of the regular price of the ticket, if we pay $15 per person, then some portion of the money will go and donate to the certain uh, ministries. In this case, Oh, you cannot see. Portion of each ticket will be donated to Hockey Ministries, International Winnipeg Pro Ministry, and Atlas uh, in Action Summer Camp Ministry. So why not taking this chance? And another good news is, it's for free for our youth because we receive gracious uh, donation from gracious donor. So you don't need to pay anything for pizza. You, you don't need to pay for a uh, ticket. You just come and eat and watch together. So bring your children, friends so we can go together. But we have to make sure we have enough ticket for each, each of our youth. So please contact us. We have set up our youth group Facebook page and youth group Instagram. At the same time, you can send me email so we can secure your, your seat for that game for, uh, for that Saturday afternoon. At the same time, I just want to ask one parent to come to, get, come to the uh, game together because we need to give them a ride. I can drive four, but I need another person to drive another four. So please, Oh, you can drive! <laughs> yes, never mind. Parents, if you want to come, pay $15. Just let me know. I will, I will get the ticket for you. Yes! Good, Naomi, thank you. Okay, so to do our youth, uh, youth ministry, I need some team members. So please consider to join us as a team leader, youth leader, and prayer warrior at this very moment. I just want to encourage you to join us as a prayer warrior for our youth uh, of our church. We need prayer. They need prayer. In this time of season, in this difficult and challenging time, prayer, it works. At the same time, last week, I didn't really mention her name properly, so 
we have a new administrative assistant, Amy Scheffner. So whenever she works from Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 12.30, and on Thursday, she works a little bit longer. So when you come to church and uh, see her, say hello and welcome her as our new administrative assistant. Wow, it was a long announcement, wasn't it? Yes, there were so many things I was so excited to announce today. But let us take our heart and prepare for our worship service with the music that our music director prepared for us this morning.
Today the call to worship Peter and his family, Peter and Mary, and I don't know who is coming. Yes, Changkwa. Nagwa. Good. Oh, it's not Peter. Emmanuel. Hallelujah, all day of resurrection. Let us shine with joy. Let us take our time to pray. Let us pray. Gracious and life-giving God, maker of all things visible, invisible, on the first day of the world, you spoke, and out of chaos came creation. Out of shadows came light. On the first day of the week, Christ was resurrected by your grace, and out of death came life. And you always come to us through the Holy Spirit to shine light on our way forward, offering your gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Praise and honor and blessing be to you, O God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. This day and every day, now and always. O Lord, we hide in tombs of indifference seeking comfort rather than justice in this world. We cling to resentment and disappointment, refusing the freedom that comes with forgiveness. Forgive us, O God, and restore us to joy and wholeness through your great mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This Easter morning, God has turned our mourning into dancing. God has taken off our sackcloth and clothed with joy. We are God's forgiven people. Let us be at peace with God, with one another, and with ourselves. Through the undenying mercy, mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn number 243, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Grove City. Let us pray. God of living word, by the power of your Holy Spirit moving in us and around, open our minds to understand, our hearts to love, and our wills to carry out your mission in the strength of our risen Lord, your word made fresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gavin, I'm going to ask you next time to pray for us. So, wait a little bit. So now we are going to uh, read the scripture to today. Dave Myers is going to come and read the first scripture for us. reading is from Isaiah chapter 65 verses 17 to 25. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create, for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered a curse. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them. Uh, or plants and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying, and is it you... And who is it you are looking for? 
Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put in him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he has said these things to her. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the rushes. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand has lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and proclaim the, what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the rushes, and I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord to which the rushes may enter. I will give thanks. I will give you thanks, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders re rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Thanks be to God. Before we're going to have our children's time, I just want to encourage you to remember one thing. I just changed one word from this particular song we are going to sing together when they coming into the front. I just said, Jesus loves you. So they all know they are loved by Jesus. So let us sing together, uh, Jesus loves me. I know, loves you when they come. So my children, it's your time. Come here. Let's have fun. Jesus loves you. For the Bible tells me Awesome. Good to see you. How are you? Before we go, let's do this. You ready? You ready? High five? No? Kevin. Nice to see you, Kevin. So children's time, yes. Finally, we are going to have our children's time, especially today is our intergenerational worship service, which means children, Young children to older children all come together and worship together. There's older children laughing at what I said, right? So, guess what? Last Tuesday, April 12th, when I came, right? 12th. When I came to church, there was one friend, a little friend, was greeting me. Guess what? Who was it? I took this video last time. A bunny. A bunny. <laughs> Cute. Cute, isn't it? Yes. Last, last Tuesday, when I get to the building, I was surprised because this little, 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 little bunny was greeting me. You know what? Why he was there? Because he just want to say this. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I know, actually. Yeah, I forgot one thing to do before we start. I know, I just want to take a selfie together, so that's why I brought my selfie stick. Okay, smile, everyone. Cheese. 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 
Good. You're so nice. So, yeah, Easter Bunny. Bunny came to say us Happy Easter, but before we talk about Easter, do you know why people say Jesus loves you? You, 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 you. Yeah. What? Yes. yes, he does. Emma? Yes, you're right. Then he loves him because he's so beautiful. Oh, yes, you're right. Because he created all of us. And he loves us, right? Yes, people, at the same time, people said it because in the song it says this. For the Bible tells us so. The Bible, oh, this, here we go. This Bible really tells us Jesus loves you, Gavin. You, 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 Savior. <laughs> Why do I have a Bible? Because I just want to know what's in it. We are talking about a Bible a little bit today. Please stay with me if it is too long for you. Probably a little bit longer than you expect. Because I'm so excited. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. But, you know what? In the beginning, in the beginning, when God created the world, there's nothing. Can you see anything from the wall? No, in the beginning. There's nothing. Oh, you can read the in the beginning. Yes, that's what. You have really good eyesight. That was cheating, yes. <laughs> I was remembering what, where I'm going, so that's why I put the words there, but not here, right? Yeah, Savior, you're good. In the beginning, there was nothing but God created sun and moon and stars and everything. Yeah, because it's sun and it's moon. It's moon. God is the sun. Yeah, God is the sun. God created the sun. Then God also created heaven and earth and all things in the earth, right? He created everything but this thing like, that were built by metal and wood and stuff. But he, he created everything so people can build things like this house, right? He gave everything us so we can build and create things. And he created fish in the ocean, in the lake. What else? Me. Mm, oh, yes. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. We are going to talk about that later. Me. 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 Yes, Emma, you. But at the same time, God created all the birds in the skies. All of us. And then? Uh, what? Animals, tiger, tiger. <laughs> and dinosaur, everything. God created everything, right? At the same time, God also created man and woman, which is Adam and Eve. And yeah, dog and cat and ram. I know, I love that story in my Bible too. But when God created, when God created, God said, Oh, please promise me don't touch that fruit in the center of this garden. The yeah, they cannot reach the fruit, but. Because of the fruit, because the evil snake said so. You remember the story, yes. Oh, you remember the details. That's great. But there's a serpent came. Yo, it's okay. It's okay to have this. Take it. Try it. This is delicious. So Eve was deceived. Okay, let's try. And Eve gave it to whom? Adam. Adam, yes. So they all ate together. So the lamb was saying, oh, that's no, no. 
the birds said, oh, there's no, no, but they didn't care. Then what happened? They commit sins before God. In the Bible, it talks about sin. When you break the promise with God, it is all sin. When you lie to God, it is all sin. Yeah, he was there and then later he ate together. Then what happened? They felt so shamed. Is this a story? It is very children's story. You can see the pictures, right? Emma? We will, go, we will be there. Wait a second. So they feel shame. So they have to wear these leaves on them. And they all blame the serpent, but it was them who broke the promise. So to cover their shame, what, give me a second. To cover their shame and their sin, what did God was? Brought this little animal. Oh, so cute, isn't it? The little animal and have to kill it. So disappear, right? Because God want to make a cloth to cover their sin, to cover their shame. So that you, that is gone now. But they have to leave the Garden of Eden, Emma. Mm-hmm. So they cannot enter the garden, right? That's a part of my story too. So it could never cover their sin, even though they God killed animal to make their clothes, but it never covered their sins. And the people broke the promise with God all the time. So God decided to do one more thing. I know what that is. What? He the world. No. Way, way later. Way later. Do you remember Christmas? What happened on the Christmas day? Emma! Um, he decided to create Jesus, his son. Not to create. He died on the cross a, a little bit later. A little bit later. But he sent his only one son to world. So Jesus was born on Christmas Day. Yes. You know? Exactly. Jesus was born. <laughs> We're looking for a tiger. So when Jesus grew up, a lot of people followed him because he was so cool guy. He was so wise, and he performed a lot of miracles, magic. What kind of magic? What? Wow, you are so ahead of me. Okay, when Jesus met this lady bleeding all the time, so he, she, her face was turned pale. She was so sick, but when she touched Jesus, Jesus cured her. Hmm? And then later, there was a little daughter who was almost dying. No, oh, no, she died. So the mother was crying, oh, my daughter has just died. Um, what happened? Jesus said, get up. Don't want to die. Yes, I know. But when Jesus came, Jesus said, get up. What happened? She woke up and said, hey, mom, I'm okay. 
But the thing was, the people, the religious leaders, the priests, and all people who has power, they are angry. They were angry, yes. They hate God. They hate God, yes. Who is the Sunday school teachers? <laughs> wow, you guys have done really good job. Yeah, I have my I lost my word. <laughs> exactly. So Jesus was uh was uh, captured and she and all people said, Oh, Jesus did not do anything wrong. They all cried. But Jesus has to carry the cross. Jesus decided to carry the cross. Yeah, because when Be God starts, um, Yes. Because Jesus think, Jesus thought this is the one thing he can do for you and for us. So that's why he died on the cross. No, he's not a girl. A little bit. All this happened because Jesus loves you. Because Jesus loves you, that's why he chose to die on the cross. Take all your sins away. Take all our sins away. Yeah, he loves me and loves you too. And he loves you. Yes. Yeah, you love me and I love you too. We, love you. we all love each other because, and the story didn't stop there. Jesus died and they tried to have his funeral service. Yeah. But it was a feast, so they cannot do this. Emma? Oh, thank you. I appreciate your patience too. So they, they put Jesus into the cave and blocked the door with a big rock because they want to prepare his funeral service later. And Sunday morning, when woman, they came to the tomb, they found it was empty. There was angel said, yes, Jesus is not here anymore because he has risen. Not yet. We will get there. And Jesus showed himself to the people. So people all believed. Wow, Jesus is arrived. I can see your excitement. Yeah, we are going to do something very exciting a moment later. And he said, I will be back. And he, said, and he went to heaven. Because Jesus loves us. I give a chance to enjoy this life. So we are going to dance together. Yes, are you ready for this song? Actually, I picked this song because it is very, very easy. No, it is very difficult for me. But you, it, is, it will be easy for you to... Uh, Dance together. Can you stand, stand with me and try it together? Okay. <laughs>
you very much for your patience with me. And now, go back to your uh, Sunday school uh, teacher, and she will give you something to do when we, old children's time, when, when I do the old children's time. So go back to your Sunday school teacher. She will give you. And thank you very much for your patience with me, and see you next week. Kevin, how are you today? Good? Nice. It was quite a try. Now, we are going to have our old children's time. Are you exciting? Yes? Because I'm going to start with the same thing. Happy Easter. <laughs> so here's my question. How many times have you celebrated Easter Sunday? How many times? How many years? 88. 88, yes. Who can beat the 88? 81. 81. Oh, not yet. Close. 81. Maybe Gavin second time, right? Then, I just want to have another question. What is the significance about Easter Sunday for you? Yes, we know. It is long weekend. A lot of people just came, and from everywhere, they gather together and have a family time. Yes, that's for sure. But what is really significant about this Easter for you, personally? Besides, it is long weekend. <laughs> we can gather. Gather, yes. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Yes, Easter Sunday, it really drew our attention to this empty tomb again. All the Sunday, all the Easter Sunday, when we celebrate together and worship together. Why this empty tomb is so significant? And what kind of role this empty tomb plays in Easter ceremony and service and celebration? Let's talk about that. Yes. According to John's Gospel, today we read one of, one of the portions of John's Gospel about this Easter Sunday morning. And the ladies, especially John, only talk about Mary Magdalene because Mary plays a key role here in this passage. But she was there with other ladies. They went to the, uh, Jesus' tomb because they want to prepare his funeral service. They couldn't do that because it was Passover, the feast, the national holiday. Nobody want to do that at all. But on Sunday morning, right after that feast, that holiday finished, they went to the tomb. And Mary found out the tomb was empty. So she went. She ran into the people. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple. This is one of the funny stories of this book of John, he always says, the one Jesus loved. He thought he is the most loved person among the 12 disciples, believe it or not. And said, they have taken the Lord out of tomb. Who are they? The Jewish people, Jewish religious leaders, out of tomb. And we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and John, they ran into the oh, tomb. But Peter was a little bit faster, so he arrived a little bit uh, faster. Oh no, John was a little bit faster. The Simon Peter came along with, behind him and went straight into the tomb. John was not really ready to go into the tomb and see the reality, see and check whether it was truth or not. But Peter, he just ran into the tomb because he just wanted to check whether Jesus was there or not. And finally, the other disciple, John, John the Apostle, he also ran into the tomb and saw and believed. This is very irony because there, there was a woman named, <coughs> excuse me, Mary. She told about the truth, but these people couldn't believe. It is not because of the, they cannot rely on what Mary said, but because 
They couldn't believe the reality, the fact Jesus was not there. But when they saw, they believed. There are some people, they always say, if I see it, I will believe. Very similar, very human nature. Even disciples of Jesus, until they have seen, they couldn't believe. They saw empty tomb. Nobody was there. The, supposed, the dead body supposed to be there was gone and had no idea where that goes. So Mary was crying there all the time and waiting and waiting and waiting for nothing. Then later, Jesus came to Mary and talked to her. First, when Mary heard of Jesus' voice, she couldn't recognize, she couldn't believe at all. But when she saw, yes, she could believe it. So she ran into the people and said, Wow, I just saw the Lord. Jesus is alive. But they didn't believe because they didn't see Jesus. This is very irony because they already have similar experience right before this cross, right before this Passover. Lazarus, he was in the tomb. And when Jesus said, walk, he came out of the tomb and the tomb was empty. But they totally forgot about that moment. They couldn't believe at all. So Jesus showed himself to Thomas when he saw the wounds on his hand and on his side. Finally, Thomas could believe. Yes, this Easter story drew our attention to the cross again. As we celebrate, as we worship together on Friday morning, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. He has to die as God sacrificed, as God killed the animal to cover Adam and Eve, their sins. He decided to send his own son to cover his own people's sin completely. That was why Jesus had to die, and Jesus chose to die. So our sins are covered. This is not made up story because in the Bible, in the book of Romans, it says about this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord by his death because of his blood. Sins are covered because of the empty tomb gives us that death is no longer your own destiny. There will be more. He proved it to those who are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. This is your destiny. And you will live with God forever. Yes. Easter morning that draws our attention to this empty tomb again and again and again and remind us that what Jesus has done on the cross and why we celebrate together on Easter. The promise was fulfilled by Jesus. Last week we talked about that. We have to rejoice in the real miracle because this is what God has done for you and me. Because Jesus does open the new world for you and me. And now Jesus encourages us to become a witness, become an ambassador, 
so we can go and share this true story of Jesus that enables us to enjoy and rejoice in this blessed life. And Jesus said, death no longer threat you. So please stand firm. Look at me. Those who are following in my footsteps, you will see what I have shown to you on this day. Then you can become the best version of yourself with me. Then you will see and enjoy this blessed life ever in me. God promised this. See, I will create new heavens and new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. A lot of people nowadays, we obsessed with what we have in our hands. Beside the words, the promise, the assurance, the guaranteed life that empty tomb proved to us. Now, it is a time to be glad, rejoice, because our Lord has risen. So all people, let us raise our voice. Jesus has arisen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our offertory and responsive hymn is hymn number 258, Dying Big the Glory. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our communion hymn is hymn number 540, One Bread, One Body. Today, we are going to celebrate this Lord's uh, table together. We have cup, we have bread. Before we celebrate together, let us confess our faith in God with the Apostles' Creed. It will be on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God. The he come judge and living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, and his body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy One, on this joyful Easter day, we offer you our gratitude and praise with our heart, full of love, for we have seen your grace and power. Rolling away the stone of sorrow and despair, bursting from the tomb in the gift of new life. And so we join our voices with all your creatures high and low, with all the saints before us, beside us, in the heaven and on earth, to celebrate your resurrecting power. Let us say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Receive our praise and joy this day, O Christ. Your resurrection promises that there are new possibilities for us and our weary world. Even when we falter this in discouragement, even if we hesitate at the news that your great love has come back to embrace us, you will not let us go. You call us by name to assure us of your love. You open our arms to welcome us back to your side. You have spread this table for us, offering us not only the bread and wine, but your very self present with us here and everywhere. In anticipation of receiving this gift, we proclaim our faith and our hope as we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, 
Christ will come again. Spirit of life rising in us and around us, breathe upon us now and upon this bread and wine. May they be for us Christ's body and blood, gift of new life, with the power to make us whole, as this bread and wine become a part of us. May we become a part of you, Lord Jesus, united with you and each other in love. Dare us to live for justice and joy, trusting that all things will work together for good through the power of the love that raised you from the dead, the power of the love we share in your name. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ on the night before he died, he took the bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke and said, this is my body that is broken for you. So let us take a part in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first pill, you can find your wafers in it. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is new covenant, sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us take part. Let us pray. Oh Lord, this morning we gather here together to remember you, what you have done on cross, what you accomplished, achieved. On that day, you arise from the dead. Oh Lord, we pray that we just want to see you among us so we can believe we, we can see the hope that we will have the same destiny as you, second Adam, we following in your footsteps. Oh Lord, help us to have this assurance in our heart and see the glorious day you have promised to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us dance together for our closing hymn, I Danced in the Morning.
Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let us put our trust in the fact, in the love that Jesus Christ proved on the cross and assured us at the empty tomb. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all from now forever. Amen.